Hey everyone and welcome back to Escape Visit Play. Today we're not doing any of that. Today is actually Caravan Improvement Day and uh, what we're actually doing today is installing a diesel heater. Now I've been contemplating doing this for quite some time but I've been a little bit nervous about doing this. Uh, thinking, oh, do we really need it? Do we not? Because uh, a lot of our caravanning is predominantly in caravan parks. So we're plugged into 240 and therefore don't really need any sort of diesel heater. Uh, so we just run the air con or sometimes we bring a little sort of a small fan heater. Um, so anyway, basically what we're, we're hoping to achieve in the coming months is to get a little bit more adventurous with that type of caravanning and uh, go a little bit more off-grid, a little bit more remote. And um, you know, now that we're getting the onset of winter and things are starting to get a little bit cold, uh, to do that we're not going to be plugging a 240, so we need to get some sort of heating. Well, the wife has said, I ain't going unless we get some heating. So, um, which has led me to what we're sort of doing today, which uh, the Malibu Caravan Family Adventure, um, we're going to install, we'll give a crack anyway, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we succeed uh, in installing this, uh, this diesel heater. So. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, I know, I know these have been done before and I'm just hoping that, uh, that you know, by doing this um, you guys might get some ideas or even some confidence if you guys are thinking of doing it yourself. Um, you know, you might sort of see it, okay, it's not too bad, it's not too, it's not too, not, not too, not too difficult, uh, that you guys might even give us a crack yourself. Anyway, what we've got is, okay, we have the actual kit that I bought off eBay. So I think about $138, $136 maybe is what I paid for it. But basically it comes with a heater, it's a 2 kilowatt uh, version. Uh, the reason why we went to 2 kilowatt is I don't like sleeping too warm, nor does uh, the rest of my family. So we're just quite happy to have something to take the bite out of the coldness. Um, you know, get the, get the caravan up to a nice sort of comfortable, you know, 22, 23, maybe even a 24. Um, and that's it. Pretty much, uh, we can, we're quite happy to rely on our blankets and you know just being comfortable that way. We don't want the 30, 35 degree temperatures in the caravan. We just probably wouldn't be comfortable sleeping that way. So if we can get that sort of 22, 23, um, I think it'll be a, a, a successful sort of you know install and you know a, a great. It'll be a hit. So um, hopefully we can achieve that. Anyway, getting back to it. So yeah, heater, uh, mounting plates, grommets. Oops, that's my drill, don't worry about that. Um, fuel pump and muffler. What do we got here? Um, looks like air cleaner, fuel filter, some brackets and some screws and bits and pieces. Thermostats and key ring on off and temperature control or temperature adjust. Bit of fuel line, a bit more fuel line, which I'm not too sure where that goes, but we'll work it out. Um, wiring harness. I'm not too sure when we're doing this wiring harness, but I'm going to be keeping it or perhaps upgrading to something that's a little bit more thicker because I have heard online that um, in different groups and so forth that this wiring can cause some voltage drop because it's a little bit thin, under gauged. Um, so I may upgrade it to a bit more of a thicker profile and hopefully that, you know, it may avoid me some future problems. Uh, a couple of vents. So we've got one and two. Um, yeah, I'll probably only be using one outlet and the other one just for, not so much for the inlet, but just maybe because where I'm going to put it is under the lounge, which I'll show you that in a few moments. A um, couple of ducts, so that's for the uh, outlet, I believe, inlet duct, and that's uh, fitting if you're going to use a separate jerry can to do the, um, the as, as, as a fuel storage as opposed to the, the fuel tank that comes with it. But anyway, I've got a 10 litre uh, fuel tank, which I will be using and a muffler so um anyway okay so that's pretty much what came with it and i'm hoping the install goes nice and smooth so uh hang around watch it uh hopefully it might give you guys some tips you know if you guys are thinking of doing it yourself and um let's just get straight into it right so what we've decided is i'm going to mount the heater under the l-shaped lounge that we have so I've just sort of pushed the uh, dining table aside for now um, and pretty much found the spot which is going to be just in this sort of area just here. Now you might sort of see that hole there at the moment. Okay, that hole just had some wires coming up there for, um, for my water tank. That pretty much just went to the Odyssey link and um, I guess just communicated with the system that I got in the van that just tells me the water levels that are currently in the tank. But um, 
that hole is going to be drilled out once I do my uh, 100 meter hole so that's just going to disappear and then I'll relocate that hole for the wires uh, probably you know a little bit further so I might even just come up just here somewhere just behind the heater where it's uh, the cold end of the heater and then just come up and then back into the module and then the module there can get screwed back on over up here um, so okay so I'm just doing all my final checks with making sure that you know do measurements of course all right I'll give you an update in a sec just before I drill any holes I still want to do a little bit more checking just to make sure that everything's going to be fine and I've got the whole position right. I'm going to put these four uh, double-sided screws into the heater. Now, I did notice that, I don't think it's a big problem, but one side of the thread is shorter than the other side. Um, so I'm just, the instructions are useless, so I'm going to insert in the heater side the shorter thread, leaving the larger thread for when I sort of put the plate on. So that way, it's just when it's under the van, if I need to access it, service the heat or what have you, it's just going to be a little bit more easy to access, I think, um, having that longest bit of thread in that plate. So, um, so yeah, I'm gonna put the, uh, the four bolts, shorter thread into the heater. So the four bolts are in and I just gently nipped them up with a pair of long nose pliers just grabbing the non-threaded part and just give it just a just a ever so gentle just a little bit of a, a, a tighten up. Time to put the rubber grommet on. Okay. Okay, I've discovered what this rubber tubing is for. Um, you're supposed to cut it up into even pieces so I think it's about six lengths but I think I've probably gonna have about seven maybe even eight lengths out of the length that I've cut it and what happens is that's for your fuel line so I just turn this around that goes so actually what I'll do is I'll put these clips on first like so Well, I've always found it's good practice just to um, just to clean up the end of it, just to make sure it's nice and sort of even. A bit of tube cutters, I'm just giving a nice clean cut. So that way, you know, it's just nice and clean. There's no sort of burring or anything like that that's going to interfere. And that's it. So what we've got is our fuel line here, all connected. So this is just still sitting here for the time being. I just kind of wanted to get just it kind of dry, everything kind of dry mounted before I go and tighten, every, tighten everything up. But yes, okay, so the fuel line and nearest to the fuel line is your air intake, which is this one. So uh, it's the black tube and the one to the left of that, which is the, the remaining one, is your exhaust. That's obviously the hot gases pass through that. So, and you want that, which is the one that's furthest away from the fuel line anyway. So, um, it's pretty easy to work out. So, this is your hot side of your heater. And this is your cold side, or the air intake and the air outlet. So, hot, cold. Pretty straightforward. So, now I'll just uh, tighten up all these bolts, put the, the little nuts on, tighten up all the clamps. And then, yeah, it's time to drill a hole in the caravan. Okay, using a 10 mil spanner, just give them a nice tight. Okay, so that's kind of it. So that's now ready to be sat into the caravan, sealed up and, uh, and bolted down. Okay, here comes the nerve wracking bit. Yeah, so basically now this is it. This is where I'll be doing all my uh, drilling. I was going to initially cover that or drill out that hole with the bigger one, but I've decided to 
again push the, the heater further back to conserve a little bit more space at that side of under the lounge just in case we want to store anything underneath it uh, which is no problem basically all I'll do once I am finished is um, under the heater those wires will go back there where they are uh, and they'll re-sort of silicon all that up again Okay, well that's it, all done, hole that is. So I've also bought one of these little gutter or downpipe shroud, uh, I think it's about seven or eight dollars from Bunnings and that'll just go in nicely just there, which it does. And let's just dry fit the heater. Okay, so just dry fitting it for now to make sure everything went well. Okay, I see the problem. Let me bring you over here. Let me show you what's going on. Okay, what the problem is, is these two little uh, screws, or the clamps, are on the outside. So, when I put my shroud over it, it's going to hit. So, um, yeah, I'll fix that up now. Alright, take two. So, I'm, don't worry about the dust. I'm just doing a dry fit at the moment. Just to make sure everything is going nice to plan. Better to be safe than sorry, right? So, because the next thing I need to do is drill the holes for the plate and cut it all out. Voila. And that sits right there. That's its new home. Okay, this is what it looks like underneath. Looks neat. Right, okay, I just realized I made a bit of a, a mistake, rookie mistake. Um, what happened is I forgot to thread this, um, the fuel pump wire uh, through the actual base of the mounting bracket. So that's supposed to come up that little sort of slot there, just coming up here. Um, so what I had to do is I just unbolt it just quickly and uh, un sort of do the brackets and just thread that through and that's all sort of fixed so um so what i did is put a couple little zip ties one in there and one there and now that's just ready to go and now i'm going to put back into the hole it's mounted exactly where i want it to be so it's nice even space around the turret and uh, with the exhaust and the air inlet uh, and i've just put in two screws for the time being so just one there and one on this side so now what i plan on doing is just getting a nice precise marking around it then I'll take out the uh, the heater and do a nice clean cut to cut that lino out of the way and just making sure that the uh, the heater itself is sitting directly on the floor uh, of the van, so the timber. Nice sharp blade. Alright, so that's that. So what I've got is this fire rated acrylic sealant by Sika. Uh, so it's heat rated, paid about 22 bucks I think it was from Bunnings. Uh, so that should do the job. Just make sure when you're using it to use some gloves because um, this stuff is pretty messy in the best of times. Putting a little bit of silicone on the inside just to really seal up. bit around the edges where the plate sort of meets the floor. And now I just want to get under there and just give a nice generous amount of sealant. Bit of sealant on those screws. 
Well, it's a bit tight under here, guys, as you can see, so, but it's just all has to be done. Um, but yeah, we'll manage, and uh, we're getting there, so I reckon we're probably about halfway there now. And um, just a few more bits and pieces, but I think for the worst of it, it's all done and dusted. So uh, we're doing pretty good. All right, now I'm planning on, this is the back end of my water tank. So I'm kind of just gonna get some zip ties and somehow wedge it up in there. I've got a bracket here uh, for the air cleaner. I'm gonna screw that to the floor. Now the screws that they give you are pretty damn long. So I got the little off cut that I drilled out and just made sure that the screw, I'll show you but I'm a bit short with hands at the moment, um, that the screw is you know, not gonna penetrate the thickness of that because that's your floor. And you know, again, the last thing you want is a screw you know, poking up through the floor of your caravan. Don't do that. All right. That ain't gonna go nowhere. Now it's time for me to just do the uh, the fuel line. So what I've done is I've just gone down the super cheap and bought some uh, some corrugated uh, conduit. It was about 16 bucks or something like that for about five or seven meters. Fuel line inside this just to protect it. Okay, so we're up to the fuel pump now. Um, that's this little guy here. Now uh, I'm gonna prep that now and get the two little rubber black hoses on either side of the clamps. Uh, in prep so that way uh, when I get under there I can just slide it in now when you do mount these it's uh, recommended they do need to be about a 45 degree angle why exactly uh, from what I've read is air bubbles so that way when because um, it's an actuator type of uh, pump and then it sort of doing that agitating the fuel can create a bit of bubbles okay so that's the fuel pump mounted uh, I just made up a little bracket coming off the uh, the chassis using an existing hole so I didn't really want to make another hole if I didn't need to uh, and bent it up made another hole here mounted the fuel uh, fuel pump in that little rubber uh, mounting it's at the correct angle and um, yeah they aren't really going anywhere so hopefully that's free enough where the clicking uh, should be minimized now it's time for the muffler uh, what I did is I just mounted I made up another little bracket just here and then sort of mounted it to the chassis of the caravan and then used the existing bracket and then bolted up to it just at the top there. Uh, I've also allowed a bit of an angle for that sort of pipe. Uh, as you can see it sort of just goes down slight angle to the actual muffler itself. The reason being is there's a little drip hole here under the muffler uh, and that's just to you know, I guess for any sort of condensation that might build up in there uh, when you start it up initially just for it to sort of drip out so it doesn't um, rust out your muffler and also I've got a tailpipe that I've ordered uh, which will go pretty much just to the end of the van um, and just to the left uh, of that sort of rear mud flap area or if it's long enough I might even just keep going right to the back of the van and vent it out nice and clearly there we go so that's the ducting I've just sort of placed it on there for the time being so it's not clamped on just yet but I'm thinking the hole needs to go about here. All right, it's got a hole saw. I'm gonna punch that hole through the panel and uh, fit the vent. Just gonna put three self tappers just to mount that vent in holding nice and secure. Beautiful. Okay, so that's what we have. Right, so now the vent is clipped in and you just pretty much turn that in any direction that you kind of want, but I'm probably gonna leave it just a little bit this way. Okay, so I'm not actually gonna duct this one. This is just more of a breather. So just letting air underneath the lounge so I don't think there's any need for me to sort of run a duct uh, from here to the inlet. Uh, the inlet is literally probably about 150 mil away. So um, I reckon this just sitting up here nicely. Uh, just let air in as the heater heats the air and pumps it out. I think that'll be more than enough. All right, all powered up. 
So just to give you a little bit of a look on what I ended up doing. So I ran a, uh, a fresh and thicker wire uh, straight from the battery and I've got a fuse at the battery end of it. Um, yes, yeah, so I've just ran a new wire under the van, uh, came up through the existing hole that was down there for my water tank wires. What I've also done is rather than putting a switch, I just put a little bullet connector on the, uh, on the positive end of it. So that way when we don't use the actual um, heater, I can just simply unplug it and that isolates it. Okay, so I just mounted the control panel and uh, yeah, so just two little self tappers. Just went in there. They don't give you anything uh, in the kit, so I just had a couple of little self tappers uh, in my uh, screw kit. And uh, yeah, I've just put them in, but I kind of figured that'd be a nice little spot near the, uh, the near the door where I've got the AC, a couple of light switches, and the battery monitoring system. So yeah, I kind of figured that'd go really nice there, which is, yep, all good. And we have power too. So the only thing that's left now is just putting the diesel tank in and then we're done is right here so like a 10 litre tank and inside you'll have this little thing rattling around so it's just the the uh, bottom plug now you can sort of work out exactly where you want it i'm going to be putting it in this one here so it's still a little hole here uh then you've got to thread this piece all the way through i just pushed a bit of wire through that bottom hole that i drilled Put it through the tank, through the cap, and then what I then did is then just tied that little uh, lug there, tied a little knot, and now the theory is, is I'll just pull it through the tank, through that hole, and um, that'll be that. Let's give it a go. Oh, that worked nice and easy. And also what I did do is I uh, put a little bit of diesel on these O-rings just to sort of lube them up a little bit. Now I'll thread it through and uh, then tie a little knot, the nut off. All done. So once again, if you kind of didn't quite get that, what I did is drilled the hole through here, threaded the wire through the tank, out the cap, and then tied, or pushed the uh, little connector through the wire, tied a little knot at the back end of it, so now I'm back over here, and then just pulled it through into the hole, tightened it off, and pushed the wire back through the tank, and took it out, and that's the end result. Ready to go. Alrighty, so I've wheeled the caravan out, uh, and I've actually started it up with the fuel tank. I haven't really shown you much about that at the moment. This is what it is. Um, okay, so I'm just basically just setting it up uh, temporarily at the moment, obviously. Uh, I just want to get the, the heater going. So where it's going to go is on the side of my toolbox just here, but I am waiting for a checker plate cover that goes around uh, that I was hoping that would have been here by today but I think it's going to come tomorrow or the day after um, so yeah I just want to start it up and got a temporary setup there for the moment there's the tank and you can actually hear the heater going I'm pretty sure let's have a look all right this is what it's like on the inside so thermostat's going there don't know if you can hear that that's pretty much going flat out. It's been running for about 10 minutes. Okay, I'll let you have a bit of a listen to that. All right, guys, it's up and running and it's 95% done. I still have yet to finish off the fuel tank and once that little um, that little sort of cover arrives, I will finish that off. I've also got a little the keypad connected up as well so I can turn the heater on and off and adjust it as well. So that'll be really good for those mornings when it's just a bit too cold to get out of bed so I can just hit that on from bed. Okay, that clicking sound from the fuel pump, it's there. It's not much I can do about it at this point. I kind of don't have any other sort of solutions at this, at this stage but if you guys do let me know, put it in the comments. I'd love to hear it and then hopefully uh, I too can quieten mine down a little bit as well. 
Okay, what I also intend to install is a little gas detector. Make sure it's all nice and safe. I'm sure it is, but just to give me peace of mind. It took me roughly about six hours to sort of install, and that's in two afternoons and sort of doing some finishing touches in the morning. So uh, collectively about six hours, and that's including bringing you guys along for the ride. You might be thinking, why did I film this? Why did I share this whole install with you guys? And look, I, over the last few years, I've been getting you know, quite a bit of uh, help from YouTube, from the community in YouTube and all the content creators that are sort of producing awesome content. So I just feel maybe this is an opportunity that I can give back. Before I wrap it up, I just want to say thank you for watching. And I really hope that this has given you guys some insight on how to install one of these things and perhaps may have taken some of the nerves away from you guys if you guys are sitting on the fence about should I, shouldn't I, can I do it, can I not do it. Um, the most daunting part for me was drilling that 100mm hole in the floor of the van but once I got past that everything else was really straightforward. So um, pretty simple and I'm confident that you'll be just fine. Keep an eye out because I will be putting another video out soon uh, after I've put the heater through some real world experiences once I've gone off grid and had to use it which won't be that far away uh, so keep an eye out for those vids and if you haven't yet already maybe subscribe so you don't miss out um, if you did like the video guys give us a thumbs up uh, and also give us some feedback okay this is my first how-to video so it would be really really cool to know what you thought of it so um, I hope it was good and I hope you guys got something out of it and I will see you in the next one